to welcome you to our service today. It's the, uh, well, I should say welcome to those in person and also those online. I'm going to move that flower. So it's a bit, yeah, there we go. And uh, it's the first Sunday of Advent today, with the beginning of the new church year. Uh, year A now, uh, the year of the gospel according to St. Matthew. Last Sunday we ended the Christian year and praise, celebrating the reign of our Lord. And uh, today we begin the year in hope, awaiting our Lord's second coming and his coming in greater fullness into our lives and our world. It's a triple C service today, which uh, is the service that once a month we do, which is a little bit different. Uh, we get uh, uh, things for our liturgy from all, all across the world, and uh, this also being the first Sunday of Advent, uh, we have the Great Litany as part of our service as well. If you would like a written order of service, you can obtain a copy from the credenza by the sanctuary entrance, or if you're watching online from the sermons section of our website. Let's bow our heads as we begin in prayer. Let us pray. God for whom we wait, we thank you for this opportunity now to gather together in worship. We pray that we may be aware of your loving presence in our midst. We pray that your loving purposes may be accomplished in our lives. And we pray that we may be strengthened by you to go forth with words of hope for a world which so needs them. And all this we ask in Jesus' most precious name. Amen. Our call to worship is on our screens. As farmers wait for rainfall, as prisoners wait for freedom, we wait for the coming of the Lord. As exiles yearn for home, as peacemakers yearn for justice, we long for the coming of the Lord. As travelers search for shelter, as lovers seek their beloved, we look for the coming of the Lord. We gather together in Advent hope, waiting, longing, and looking for the coming of the Lord in our lives and in our world. Now we'll sing the great litany. And those that are able to stand. God the Father, creator of heaven and earth. Have mercy on us. God the Son, redeemer of the world. Have mercy on us. God the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. Holy, blessed, and glorious Trinity, three persons and one God, have mercy on us. 
Lord, remember not our offenses, nor the offenses of our forebears. Spare us, good Lord, spare your people, whom you have redeemed with your precious blood. Spare us, good Lord. From all, mis from all evil and mischief, from sin, from the crafts and assaults of the devil, from your wrath, and from everlasting condemnation. Good Lord, deliver us. From all spiritual blindness, from pride, vainglory, and hypocrisy, from envy, hatred, and malice, and from all want of charity. Good Lord, deliver us. From all deadly sin, and from the deceits of the world, the flesh, and the devil. Good Lord, deliver us from all false doctrine, heresy, and schism, from hardness of heart and contempt of your word and commandment. Good Lord, deliver us from earthquake and tempest, from drought, fire, and flood, from civil strife and violence, from war and murder, and from dying suddenly and unprepared. Good Lord, deliver us. By the mystery of your holy incarnation, by your baptism, fasting, and temptation, and by our proclamation of the kingdom. Good Lord, deliver us. By your agony and bitter grief, by your cross and passion, by your precious death and burial, by your glorious resurrection and ascension, and by the coming of the Holy Spirit. Good Lord, deliver us. In our times of trouble, in our times of prosperity, in the hour of death, and on the day of judgment. Good Lord, deliver us. Receive now our prayers, Lord God. May it please you to rule and govern your holy church universal and lead it in your way. Hear us, good Lord. Strengthen your servant, Charles, our King, in true worship and holiness of life. Be his defender and keeper, that he may always seek your honor and glory, and endue the leaders of this nation with wisdom and understanding. Hear us, good Lord. Bless and defend all who strive for our safety and protection, and shield them in all dangers and adversities. Hear us, good Lord. Grant wisdom and insight to those who govern us and to judges and magistrates the grace to execute justice with mercy. Hear us, good Lord. Enlighten all bishops, priests, and deacons with true knowledge and understanding of your word that in their preaching and living they may declare it clearly and show its truth. Hear us, good Lord. Bless all your servants preparing for ministry in your church. Pour your grace upon them that they may serve others as Christ himself has served us for the building up of his body in love. Hear us, good Lord. Encourage and prosper your servants who spread the gospel in all the world and send out laborers into the harvest. Hear us, good Lord. Bless and keep your people, that all may find and follow their true vocation and ministry. Hear us, good Lord. Give us a heart to love and reverence you, that we may diligently live according to your commandments. Hear us, good Lord. To all your people give truth in grace to listen to your word, to receive it gladly, 
and to bring forth the fruit of the Spirit. Hear us, good Lord. Strengthen those who stand firm in the faith, encourage the faint-hearted, raise up those who fall and finally beat down Satan under our feet. Hear us, good Lord. To all nations grant unity, peace, and concord, and to all people give dignity, food, and shelter. Hear us, good Lord. Grant us abundant harvests, strength and skill to conserve the resources of the earth, and wisdom to use them well. Hear us, good Lord. Enlighten with your spirit all who teach and all who learn. Hear us, good Lord. Come to the help of all who are in danger, necessity, and trouble. Protect all who travel by land, air, or water, and show your pity on all prisoners and captives. Hear us, good Lord. Strengthen and preserve all women who are in childbirth and all young children and comfort the aged and lonely. Hear us, good Lord. Defend and provide for the widowed and the orphaned, the refugees and the homeless, the unemployed, and all who are desolate and oppressed. Hear us, good Lord. Heal those who are sick in body or mind, and give skill and compassion to all who care for them. Hear us, good Lord. Grant us true repentance, forgive our sins, and strengthen us by your Holy Spirit to amend our lives according to your holy word. Hear us, good Lord. Son of God, we ask you to hear us. Son of God, we ask you to hear us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us your peace. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let's say together the collect of the day. Almighty God, as your kingdom dawns, turn us from the darkness of sin to the light of holiness, that we may be ready to meet you in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And uh, those who are able to keep standing, I invite to keep standing as we sing our opening hymn. O come, O come, Emmanuel.
seated. I invite uh, children to come forward for uh, children's time. be good. <coughs> so today I thought we might introduce everybody to Cheeto. He's a um, church mouse. So can you tell us why your name Cheeto? Because because I love cheese, and cheese puffs, and cheese balls, and rice crackers with cheese and... Um, I think we get... So if you have cheese or cheese puffs at coffee later, if you wouldn't mind dropping some. Ah, uh, Cheeto. Sorry, I got carried away. Well, I have something I need to say to you. Happy New Year! Oh no! Did I miss Christmas? No. It's not the church, the calendar New Year. It's the church New Year. This is the beginning of a new series of readings, and it's also a new church season. What season is that? Oh, it's the season of Advent. Advent is a word that's made up of two Latin words that together mean come or coming to. So what big celebration are we coming to? Can you do it, Toby? I think actually somebody knows there. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay, it's Christmas. Advent is the time of year when we prepare ourselves to celebrate Christmas. I love Christmas. I think most people do. It's also, because it's a new season, a time when we have a new mark of mission to think about. The mark of mission for Christmas and or for Advent and Christmas is to tell other people about Jesus. Does that mean I have to run after people and say, "Let me tell you about Jesus"? Cause that's scary. Well, that's certainly one way to do it, Cheeto, but it, it's not necessarily the best way. We should be prepared to answer people's questions, but has anyone heard the saying, actions speak louder than words? St. <laughs> Francis of Assisi put it this way, and he's a patron saint of church mice, by the way. Wow. Preach the gospel at all times. When necessary, use words. What does that mean? It means that we tell people about Jesus best when we act like Jesus, when we live the way that Jesus taught us to live. Can anybody tell me who an ambassador is, or what they do. Open question. <laughs> okay, you guys 
Diana's feet. An ambassador, or most of them, are people who represent or speak for <coughs> their countries. They go to other places and tell people there about their country and <coughs> about the people there. Last week and this week too, we're going to be hearing about how Jesus is going to come again. Not as a baby this time, but as king of the whole earth. But the kingdom of God is already here. It's in heart. What does that mean? Well, it means that every time you wear a cross, every time you tell someone you believe in Jesus, or that you go to church, or you invite a friend to Sunday school. You're saying that you're an ambassador for Jesus. <laughs> and what you do and what you say tell people about Jesus and the kingdom of God. Today, in Sunday school, at the end of it, you're going to be getting a manger. Now a manger is like a feed trough for animals. And you've probably heard the story of Jesus, how he was born in a stable and laid in a manger. Our mangers are made out of cardboard, but the real one would And it would have been filled with hay and stuff. Do you think that would be a very comfortable place for the baby? Especially if there wasn't any hay? I don't either. So, what we're going to do is we're going to fill up our mangers. With hay, we're going to fill them with kindness. In addition to the manger, you'll be getting actually a couple sheets of paper that have some ideas of things that you can do. Um, and also a lot of blank spots so that you can fill in your own ideas or if you do something more than once. Some of these are uh, make a card for someone. Be a friend to somebody new or somebody who doesn't seem to have a lot of friends. Make cookies for a neighbor. Some of you may need your parents or grandparents' help with some of these. Okay. Um, here's one your parents will like. Clean up your room without being asked. Each time you do one of these things, I want you to cut that strip off your paper and put it in your manger. And on the Sunday before Christmas, you'll be given a little Jesus doll. How comfortable your Jesus will be will depend on how well you fill your manger. Oh, I love Jesus. I did it again, didn't I? I meant to say, I love Jesus. That's okay, Chido. You know what? That's why God sent Jesus. We all mess up sometimes. So God sent Jesus so that when we do mess up, through Him, we can be forgiven. And someday, when the time is right, we'll all go and live together with him in heaven. Thank you, God. Let's all thank you. <coughs> Father God, thank you that you loved us so much that you sent us Jesus 
so that through him we could be forgiven. Thank you for your word and for the example of Jesus to teach us how to live. Thank you for the Holy Spirit that guides us and gets us on the right path again when we pray. Thank you for one another, for their guidance, for their support in this life as we wait for Jesus to come again. Please grant us strength and the confidence to tell other people about Jesus. And I understand we'll be doing the Advent writing first. Yes, I thought so. But, but um, yeah, and then we'll be going to Sunday school, we'll, where we'll be preparing for Christmas by decorations. So Betty will help you, but uh, if uh, one or two of you would like to, uh, you guys would like to help. Uh, Betty, uh, like that uh, one of the purple candles in the Advent wreath. Next week we'll talk about what that candle was is about, and also uh, the second candle. But uh, right now we'll just have you light one. Push it up. Too late. Oh, you got it. Good. <laughs> Thanks, guys. You can go off to Sunday school. So, uh, there's a prayer for the Advent wreath. And then uh, after that prayer, we have the Advent candles song. Let us pray. Lord our God, we praise you for your Son, Jesus Christ, for he is Emmanuel, the hope of all people. He is the wisdom that teaches and guides us. He is the Savior of us all. O Lord, let your blessing come upon us as we light the first purple candle of this wreath. May the wreath and its light be a sign of Christ's promise of salvation. May he come quickly and not delay. We ask this in his holy name. Amen.
Arise, shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Though night still covers the earth, and darkness covers the nations, over you will the Lord arise. Over you will his glory appear. Nations will stream to your light. And kings to your dawning brightness. Your gates will always be open. They will call you the city of the Lord. The Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Violence will no more be heard in your land. Ruin or destruction within your borders. You will name your walls salvation. You will call your gates grace. No longer will the sun be your light by day. No longer the moon give you light by night. Your the Lord will be your eternal light. Your God will be your glory. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. This is the message which Isaiah, son of Amos, received in a vision about Judah and Jerusalem. In days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house will be set over all other mountains, raised high above the hills. All the nations will stream towards it, and many peoples will go and say, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways, and that we may walk in his paths. For instruction comes from Zion, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He will judge between the nations as arbiter among many peoples. They will beat their swords into mattocks and their spears into pruning knives. Nation will not lift sword against nation, nor even again be trained for war. Come, people of Jacob, let us walk in the light of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now I invite all who are able to stand for our gradual hymn, Hark, a Herald Voice is Sung. <clears throat> Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Nobody knows what day or time this will happen, Jesus went on. The angels in heaven don't know it, and nor does the Son, only the Father knows. You see, the royal appearing of the Son of Man will be like the days of Noah. What does that mean? Well, in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking. 
They were getting married and giving children in marriage, right up to the day when Noah went into the ark. They didn't know about it until the flood came and swept them all away. That's what it'll be like at the royal appearing of the Son of Man. Oh, on that day, there will be two people working in the field. One will be taken, the other will be left. There will be two women grinding corn in the mill. One will be taken, the other will be left. So keep alert. You don't know what day your master will come. But bear this in mind. If the householder had known what time of night the burglar was going to come, he would have stayed awake and wouldn't have let his house get broken into. So you too must be ready. The Son of Man is coming at a time you don't expect. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I speak to you in the name of the one true and living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Today marks the beginning of Advent, the season when we prepare for the coming of Christ, a season when we hear again the church emphasis on hope and the future. Part of what we do during the season is to prepare to celebrate the coming of Christ as a baby in Bethlehem. But that is not where we start on this Sunday. We do not start at the beginning of the story, we start at the end. Now this is not a foreign concept to us. We are, after all, a people used to setting goals. We nod our heads in agreement with the saying, the one who wants to make a good beginning must keep the end in view. And this makes sense to us. Athletes visualize themselves breaking the tape at the finish line or scoring the goal or blocking the shot. Investment counselors talk about what you would like to do during your retirement so that you can plan accordingly. Career counselors ask you to envision what you would like to be doing in five years' time so that you can take the necessary steps to get there. No one would advise you, just wander off aimlessly and see what happens. Keep your options open, sure, but nothing beats having a compelling goal and setting off toward it. The picture offered in today's first reading is a beautiful destination. Just the type of place we all would like to end up. Someday, someday, says the prophet, this is the future that awaits us, God's future for us. People from all over the world gather together, all worshiping the one God. No more war between nations, swords beaten into plowshares and spears into pruning hooks. What a beautiful vision of the future this is. A bright future to hope for. Of course, Advent is the season of hope, a season to remind us what that we worship the God of things that are not yet, the God of things that will be. Advent is the season to hold up before us visions of things that sound impossibly remote to us, completely unrealistic and naive. Advent images, like today's of weapons of war turned into tools for producing food. Images like the lion lying down with the lamb. Light that the darkness will never quench. A child born of a virgin whose name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. The Church puts these images before us in these Advent days, 
not in a curmudgeonly protest against the more prevalent images of red-nosed reindeers and elves and mistletoe, but because church, the church knows that Christian hope must keep the future before us, not nostalgia for the past, and that Christian hope must be big and it must be bold. Very often, however, our hope fails because of a lack of imagination, a lack of courage, or because we're contented with small, private things, because we are too afraid to think big, too fearful that if we think big, we will only be disappointed. And of course, if we're honest, it's hard to hope big. To hope big seems to be inevitably doomed, or just foolish, or naive. After all, can we really hope for swords to be beaten into plowshares, or spears into pruning hooks? Or can we really hope that Christ will come again and bring a reign of love and peace and justice and bring an end to all the fighting, the hate, the despair, the suffering, the disorder of our world. Can we really be so bold, so daring as to genuinely, deeply hope that such an age is possible? Or do we just conclude that it's just so much wishful thinking? Certainly it's easy to think that way when we look at the past. Either the past as it actually happened, or the past as we imagine it to once have been. Isn't that part of what causes the disappointment and discouragement of so many during the secular season of Christmas, now in full swing? It seems nothing we do can live up to the way that we believe things once were, or nothing we've experienced has lived up to the way it should have been. And although uh, Cheeto may be looking forward to Christmas, I suspect there are an awful lot of people who look to the coming of Christmas with dread. That it simply won't live up to our expectations. It won't be like we remember it being as we were children. It will be too overwhelming, too much to do, too much running around, too expensive, too exhausting, too frustrating. And in that fear and exhaustion and despair, there is no place for hope. Thankfully, there's lots of people out there willing to offer advice, to offer help, with the holidays. It seems Halloween hasn't even ended before magazines start appearing in the grocery stores and books in the bookstore giving helpful advice for the holidays. You know what I'm talking about. Those glossy magazines with Christmas cookie recipes and home decorating ideas and suggestions for reducing stress. Sometimes they actually provide sound advice such as to be more realistic in expectations of ourselves and others. Reminders that we don't need to do everything perfectly. We don't need to choose the perfect gifts. We don't need to please everybody. We don't need to lose weight, redecorate our homes, cook like a gourmet, and ensure that at child, every child's every desire is met. In a nutshell, these holiday advice givers tell us to do three things. Set more attainable goals, 
learn from the past, and be more realistic about what's possible. And the end result is a shorter to-do list, a smaller set of expectations, and more limited hopes. Now, oddly enough, the church, in our observance of Advent, advises exactly the same things, but with dramatically different results. The church's Advent advice is the same. Set attainable goals, learn from the past, and be realistic about what's possible. But the anticipated results aren't smaller expectations, but rather greater ones. Not limited hopes, but bigger hopes. We become people who dream of swords beaten into plowshares and lions and lambs lying down together. We hope for world peace, not as wishful thinking, but as something we're expecting God will accomplish. And our mindset is one that we want to help. We want to work with God in making those dreams, in making those hopes. Not passing fancies, not fairy tales that you tell children, but real, tangible accomplishments. And so set attainable goals. In today's epistle reading, which we didn't hear this morning, but which I encourage you to uh, check out, it says, lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Live honorably. Let Christ transform you into persons who love one another. Perfectly doable. Pretty plain. Pretty simple. If we're committed. Doesn't require fussing around and going to a bunch of stores and searching for the perfect thing. Right? We're already offered the armor of light. Put it on. Let the light shine through you. Not in what you buy or what you do, but in who you are, a beloved child of God. Learn from the past. Advent is a season to read and to study scripture, to take the time to pause and reflect When we read scripture, we discover that the Bible is nothing more than a record of divine promises made and divine promises kept. It reminds us that God, who was faithful in the past, will be faithful in the future. And this is liberating good news because it frees us up to give up any obsession we have with the past to put aside past wounds, past anxieties, past hurts, fears, and doubts, and to live freely in the here and the now, embracing the present and hoping for the future because we know that God keeps God's promises, that God has kept God's promises in the past and God will keep God's promises in the future the future becomes a whole lot less scary if we genuinely believe that and live our lives as if we believe that. And if we believe that God is faithful, that God keeps God, God's promises, well then, 
Our hopes, our dreams are entirely realistic. We cannot but help dream and hope big. We cannot but hope and believe that the big things like joy and peace and wholeness are possible. That all of these things lie ahead of us. That all of these things are in our future. That all our real wholeness, our real joy, our real love, completely, fully realized, is in our future. And that's why Advent, in particular, and our Christian faith, is future-oriented. Yes, Jesus Christ was born in Bethlehem. Yes, he actually died and was buried and rose again and appeared openly to his disciples. Yes, all these things historically in the past happened. But they all happened so that we can live fully in the present and with hope and confidence into the future that awaits us. The future for which God is preparing us. A future of which Christ raised from the dead is only the first fruits. We cut ourselves short when we underestimate the importance of future goals. They not only give us hope, but how we envision the future breaks into how we live our present. Our future can form our present, rescue it, revitalize it, give it meaning and purpose. Viktor Frankl, in his book, Man's Search for Meaning, tells of his experience as a prisoner in a Nazi concentration camp. In helping other people survive that brutal and horrible experience, he said that the one thing that made a difference for people's survival was hope for the future. He wrote, the prisoner who had lost faith in the future, his future, was doomed. With his loss of belief in the future, he also lost his spiritual hold. I remember two cases of would-be suicide. Both used the typical argument. They had nothing more to expect from life. In both cases, it was a question of getting them to realize that life was still expecting something from them. Something in the future was expected of them. We found, in fact, that for one, it was a child whom he adored and who was waiting for him in a foreign country. For the other, it was a thing, not a person. This man was a scientist and had written a series of books which still needed to be finished. His work could not be done by anyone else. So even in those moments, when we throw up our arms in desperation and say, what's the point? Is this all there is? I've done everything. What more is there to do? Remember that God has more for you to do. God expects more from you. And if we trust God, we look forward in hope and in confidence. Hoping for the future is Advent hope. Realistic hope, possible hope, practical hope, because God is the God who holds the future. God is the one preparing you for the future. God is the one calling us into that future and using prophets and wise people from every generation and even God's own son to hold that hope forever before us. That yes, indeed, they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. The lion shall lie down with the lamb, and behold, 
a virgin shall conceive and bear a son. Amen. Now I invite all who are able to stand as we share an affirmation of faith for Advent. We believe in God the Father, creator of heaven and earth, the one who is full of patience, who is not afraid of silence, who does not need to fill each moment with activity and noise, the one who is beyond bluster and flurry, and who does not jostle for attention. We believe in God the Son, Savior of creation, who slipped into Bethlehem one night mostly unnoticed, who lived 30 years without headlines or hurry, who frequently took time alone with his patient father, who waited for the night time to become the suffering servant, who stood quietly before the noise of his accusers, whose silence overpowered their words, who died and rose again on a quiet Sunday morning. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens, empowers, renews, and refreshes sometimes arriving with obvious power, sometimes with the quiet breath of a whisper. We believe in one God who patiently waits for us and who longs for us to do the same. Now I invite us to be seated or kneel as we share an Advent confession. In hope, let us offer our confession to the Lord. In the last days, they will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. So in these days, may we turn around the camera of our self-centered selfies to take a long, loving look at our face in others. Lord Jesus, in hope, in whom we hope, Come to us and renew us in your love. So in these days, may we upturn the podium of our calculated competitiveness and elevate the least among us, Lord Jesus, in whom we hope. Come to us and renew us in your love. So in these days, may we dismantle the walls of our fears which keep at arm's length the refugees, the foreigners, the homeless, and build their homes with those, sorry, with those same bricks and these same arms. Lord Jesus, in, ho in whom we hope. Come to us and renew us in your love. How many times, Lord Jesus, have you come to us unwelcomed? How often have you visited, yet we have been too busy to notice? Spoken yet, we have been too full of ourselves. Change our hearts and renew us in your love this Advent. Make us so sensitive to your immediate comings in the ups and downs of each ordinary day that we shall be well prepared to welcome your final coming as a consummation of love and joy. For your love's sake. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I invite us to stand as we are able. God has spoken peace into our hearts, and so we share that gift of peace with one another. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's greet one another with the peace of Christ. Please be seated. We're now pausing for a moment to Remember our call to offer to God our time, talents, and treasures, sharing the gifts 
that uh, God has shared with us. And uh, as we have shared uh, and said other Sundays, uh, one way that we do share our treasure is through the offerings that we give to St. Paul's. I'd like to thank everyone for uh, continuing to give financially to St. Paul's. Uh, Your giving is essential for us to carry out the mission of spreading the good news of hope throughout the world in word and in deed. Some of you who are sharing today's service uh, in person will brought offerings uh, for the offering plate on the credenza. Uh, And if you uh, haven't put it in there yet, uh, uh, you can put it as you leave. But there are many other ways besides putting a um, um, gift into the offering plate uh, to give financially to St. Paul's. And our screens are showing a slide that mentions uh, the ways that we can share our support and so participate in our mission. And as we watch this slide, let's listen to our choir share as an anthem, Go Up to the Mountain. you to stand as you're able, and let's share the prayer over the gifts. God of love and power, your word stirs within us the expectation of the coming of your Son. Accept all we offer you this day, and sustain us with your promise of eternal life. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we'll say the beginning of the Eucharistic prayer because the words are a little different. The Lord is here. God's Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We give thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It It is is right right to to offer thanks and praise. praise. It is indeed right that we should praise you, God of love, our source and our fulfillment. For you create all things and in you we live and move and have our being. Your wonder is manifest in land and sea and sky. When the times had at last grown full and the earth had ripened in abundance, 
You made us in your image for yourself. And even though we turn from you again and again, you call us to yourself and in every age promise liberation. As a mother tenderly gathers her children, you embrace the people as your own to rear them in your way of compassionate love. From your own being, you sent Jesus among us, incarnate of the Holy Spirit and born of Mary, our sister. Jesus revealed your care for all you have made and showed us your way of reconciliation. Looking forward to the joy of new life, Jesus suffered the pangs of the cross and in rising again became the firstborn of the renewed family. Now we watch for the day when he will come again to reign in fullness of power and glory that we, without shame or fear, may rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. To you indeed be glory, almighty God, because on the night before he died, your son Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given you thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, and when he had given you thanks, he gave it to them and said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. And so, in this great sacrament, we celebrate and proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come in glory. Therefore, loving God, recalling now Christ's death and resurrection, we ask you to accept this, our sacrifice of praise. You sent your Holy Spirit to give birth to us, your church, and your spirit stays to nurture and to guide us. Pour out the same spirit upon us now and upon these gifts of bread and wine, that we may be fed with the body and blood of your Son and be filled with your life and goodness. Strengthen us to do your work and to be your body in the world. Unite us in Christ and give us your peace. Through your Holy Spirit, burning as a flame, gentle as a dove, May we who receive these gifts live lives of justice, love, and prayer, and be a voice for those who are not heard. In union with your whole church, we worship you, O God, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing, honor, and glory be yours, here and everywhere, now and forever. Amen. Amen. As our Savior taught us, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. God.
God of promise, you prepare a banquet for us in your kingdom. The body of Christ given for you. Amen. And the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. At this time we have the most wonderful blessing of receiving our Lord into our hearts as we feed on him by faith with thanksgiving. We partake of our Lord's body, broken and blood outpoured, that we may be his body in the world, redeemed by his blood. Some of us are partaking physically, but all of us are partaking spiritually. Those who are sharing the service online, please do remember that reserved sacrament is available. If you'd like to partake of uh, Holy Communion at home, and you can hold on to that uh, until this time in the service, and then receive communion along with the rest of us here. And uh, that reserved sacrament can be picked up during office hours. And to partake of communion physically in the sanctuary this morning, uh, we uh, ask you to please uh, uh, respect uh, physical distancing, uh, using the uh, stickers on the floor as a guide. And uh, when you come up and sanitize your hands, please place your hands in the shape of a cross, palms up to receive. Um, once you have uh, been given the host, which will be infused with three drops of wine, please move to the right or left, depending on where you're sitting. Partake while you're still at the front, and then walk down the side aisle. Uh, Gluten-free hosts are available upon request. If you don't wish to partake of communion, but would like to receive a blessing, please come to the front and place your arms in the shape of a cross over your chest. And then uh, Norman will know that's what you desire. But I invite us to come now and share these gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God.
to stand for our hymn after communion, Awake, Awake, O Zion, Our God Reigns.
The watchmen lift their voices and raise a shout of joy, for he will come again. Then all eyes will see the salvation of our God, for he has redeemed Jerusalem. Our reigns, his king of all the earth, our reigns, and his feet along the throne. Share together the prayer after communion. All your works praise you, O Lord, and your faithful servants bless you. Gracious God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. May we who share his body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so that we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The grace of Christ Jesus, who is the same today, yesterday, and forever, lead you to the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, and then take you on to those tasks and joys which will prepare you for the greater joy which is to come. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Please be seated and we'll look at some announcements. I'd like to begin by welcoming any who are visiting or here for the first time in person or online. If you'd like to make St. Paul's your parish home or just learn more about us, please fill out the card in the ends of your pew uh, and give it to Norman, Betty, or me, or contact the office to email one to you. Everyone's invited to share coffee time uh, today with us. Uh, In-person coffee time takes place immediately after the service, and thank you, uh, Doreen, for uh, pinch-hitting today. Uh, there is a sign-up list in the hall, and I do invite you to, to sign that if you're able to help with coffee time on a Sunday. At 11.45, there is a virtual coffee time, and the link that you need to participate in that is in our order of service. Cyril wants to thank everyone for the birthday wishes and flowers and the prayers for his improving health. And uh, as we're talking about thank yous, thank you everyone for donating uh, this month to the Veterans Food Bank. Uh, we've met our goal of filling all four boxes in our hall, and that's wonderful. And uh, Sunday School needs three coffee cans, or cans of similar size, uh, to make drums for the Christmas pageant. Uh, they can be plastic or cardboard as long as they have plastic lids. Uh, and it would be great if you could bring these next Sunday. Pioneers of Paul, or POP, our youth volunteer group had their first event yesterday, clad in their new POP t-shirts, and I'm a proud owner of one of those as an honorary POP <laughs> member. And, uh, but clad in those shirts, they served dinner at In From The Cold, and it went excellently. Uh, the next POP activity is an information session next Sunday, uh, December 4th at 10.45. An online quiet service of Advent evening prayer was posted on Facebook and YouTube on Friday. Uh, the, and uh, the next midweek online service is a longest night a service of solace on December 15th. Our Advent DVD study, Incarnation, Rediscovering the Significance of Christmas, starts this Wednesday, uh, November 30th, and goes to December 21st. And you can come in person at 10.30 or share the uh, study via Zoom at 7.30. And obviously, if you want to do that, you'll need the Zoom link. Uh, the study book is available from the office for $10. 
Our next in-person Wednesday Holy Eucharist is this Wednesday at 10 or at 9:30 a.m. And uh, we are hosting a Christmas market at St. Paul's this Saturday, December 3rd, from 10 till 3. And volunteers are needed. Uh, please do note that we've decided not to have the kids' store at the market this year. Sorry, minor correction. There is a kids' store. I've had more volunteers and toys come in. So if you can bring toys in for the kids' store, I'll take them even day of uh, next Saturday. We're just setting up a small table for kids, 25 cents, and all are to buy a toy while their parents are shopping. So sorry for the correction. I had some toys come in this morning. Oh, okay, great. That's wonderful. So, uh, and for further information or volunteer sign up, that's the man to talk to right there. And uh, you can email him also at uh, steve.cole68 at gmail.com. And that's 68 is because that's how old uh, he is. He's 68 years old. And he looks wonderful, I have to say. <laughs> uh, confirmation preparation for youth 12 and up continues next Sunday, December 4th in our junior high Sunday school class with the third Alpha Youth Series refresh video, Why Did Jesus Die? And our annual ladies Christmas party is taking place December 6th at 6 p.m. It's a wonderful opportunity to celebrate the joy of Christmas together. RSVP to Julie, and that's J. Thompson Wilson at Shaw.ca by this Friday. And for more details about all these announcements and all the other activities happening at St. Paul's, please check out our weekly communications, including our news bulletin and our monthly issue of Living Waters. Now let's stand and we'll sing about our Lord of Glory as our closing hymn. As we await our coming Savior, go and live out your hope gen graciously, generously, and courageously. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.